In the remote and windswept village of Cliffhaven, cradled by the formidable cliffs that rise against the backdrop of a storm-wracked sea, stands an ancient lighthouse. This structure, abandoned by the sands of time, casts a long shadow over the village, its history intertwined with the very essence of Cliffhaven. The locals, whose ancestors have tread these lands for generations, speak of the lighthouse's keeper in tones threaded with reverence and fear, a spectral guardian whose story has melted into the legends that shroud Cliffhaven in an air of mystery. Welcome to my home! <laughs> According to whispered accounts, this guardian, now a ghostly figure etched into the village's lore, once commanded the elements themselves, holding sway over the tempests that rage against the cliffs. The lighthouse, bathed in an otherworldly glow at the twilight hour, marks the threshold between the known world and that which lies beyond. It serves not just as a guide for wayward ships, but as a beacon for souls lost to the sea's wrath, drawing them to its base. These spirits, caught between the tides of life and death, find themselves in a purgatory of sorts under the watchful eye of the moon. Some seek solace and passage to the beyond, while others, less fortunate, are doomed to wander this liminal space, ensnared by their own despair and the lighthouse's eternal vigil. The veil between the living and the dead, they say, is perilously thin here made tangible by the mournful cries of the sea and the restless whispers of the wind. It is in this forsaken place that our tale unfolds, beneath the unyielding gaze of the lighthouse, where reality blurs into myth, and the tales of old seem not just stories, but ominous premonitions of what lies in wait. On nights when the moon hung heavy and bloated in the sky, casting a spectral glow over Cliffhaven's jagged landscape, the villagers whispered of an eerie awakening within the desolate lighthouse. Abandoned and silent for ages, its beacon, which had not shone for untold years, would inexplicably ignite with a ghostly light. This supernatural flame, cutting a swath through the dense fog that rolled in from the sea, was said to call forth the souls of the departed, guiding them like moths to a flame. Within the confines of their modest homes, the villagers would draw their families close, sealing themselves away from the night's ominous embrace. They barricaded their windows with heavy shutters and recited ancient incantations passed down through generations, a feeble shield against the specters believed to roam freely during these enchanted hours. The air itself seemed to thicken with anticipation, charged with the whispers of the dead and the living alike all fearing the thinning veil that allowed the departed to brush shoulders with the world of the living. As the beacon of the lighthouse pierced the night, its unearthly light beckoning to lost souls, a palpable dread settled over Cliffhaven. The elders of the village, their faces etched with lines of countless worries, would gather their kin, recounting tales of the lighthouse's grim history and the guardian whose spirit lingered still. They spoke of a time when the boundary between realms would become so frail that the living could hear the whispered regrets of the dead, a reminder of the fragile barrier that separated them from the spectral figures drawn to the lighthouse's blaze. Yet our story diverges with the arrival of an audacious stranger, drawn to Cliffhaven not by fate, but by a voracious curiosity for the arcane and the allure of mysteries veiled in shadow. This outsider, a writer whose lifeblood was the pursuit of stories lurking in the dark crevices of our world, found themselves ensnared by the legends of the haunted lighthouse and the village it ominously watched over. Armed with nothing but a weathered notebook, filled with tales of specters and curses yet to be unraveled, a camera with lenses eager to pierce the veil between worlds, and a resolve as unyielding as the cliffs themselves, they ventured forth. As the sky bled colors of twilight, a silvered path laid by the moon itself seemed to guide their steps toward the precipice. The writer, whose name was whispered amongst the spirits as if a harbinger of change, possessed an unquenchable thirst to uncover the truth nestled within folklore and fear. They were no stranger to the night and its whispered secrets, having chased the shadows that danced at the edge of reality across the globe. Yet. Cliffhaven, with its shrouded past and the beacon that sliced through the night, 
promised a story unlike any other. It was here, at the threshold of the unknown, that they prepared to delve into the heart of the lighthouse's enigma, seeking to strip away the layers of myth that had petrified over centuries. As they approached the base of the lighthouse, the air grew chill, and the sea's roar became a mournful lament, as if nature itself warned of the threshold they dared to cross. The moon, a silent witness to countless tales of sorrow and lost souls, cast an ethereal glow on their path, illuminating the way to revelations untold and truths that many believed were better left buried in the depths of Cliffhaven's haunted history. Approaching the lighthouse, the atmosphere shifted palpably, the temperature plummeting as if the very air sought to penetrate their bones with a ghostly cold. Each step forward was met with the ocean's roar, a symphony of tumultuous waves clashing against the unforgiving cliffs whispering secrets of the deep in mournful tones. These were not mere sounds of nature, but seemed imbued with the voices of the damned, sharing tales of woe and longing from their watery graves. The lighthouse itself, a towering specter in the gloom, stood as a silent sentinel over the abyss. Its form, illuminated by the moon's ethereal light, cast an ominous shadow, painting a picture of desolation and foreboding against the night sky. As the rider neared, a startling discovery. The lighthouse's entrance was ajar, the heavy door moving with a life of its own, creaking softly in the wind as if to whisper invitations or warnings to those who dared to venture closer. Compelled by an insatiable curiosity, the rider paused, their heart a drumbeat echoing the restless sea. The door's subtle motion, as though guided by unseen forces, seemed an unequivocal summons into the heart of the lighthouse's mystery. This threshold, long crossed by spectral keepers and lost souls alike, now lay open before them, a gateway to the unknown. With a deep breath, stealing their resolve amidst the crescendo of the ocean's lament, they stepped forward, crossing into the lighthouse's embrace, where countless stories awaited, bound in shadow and silence. Upon entering, the rider was immediately cloaked in an almost tangible cold, a chill that seemed to seep into their very soul. The air within the lighthouse was dense, imbued with the essence of the sea and an ancient, ineffable aroma that spoke of ages passed in silent vigil. The beam of their flashlight, a lone sentinel of light in the engulfing darkness, danced across the walls, revealing the echoes of a bygone era. Photographs whose subjects' eyes bore into the present with an unsettling depth and nautical charts sprawled across tables, their roots tracing the veins of forgotten seas. With each step upon the worn spiral staircase, the air grew thick with the presence of unseen whispers, as if the very stones murmured secrets into the night. These voices, spectral and faint, seemed to weave a tapestry of narratives lost to time, beckoning the rider ever upward. The staircase wound tightly, a helix ascending into darkness, where the boundary between the real and the ethereal blurred, inviting them to unravel the lighthouse's enigmatic core. As they ascended, the whispers coalesced into a more discernible chorus, a symphony of lost voices that seemed both a warning and an enticement, urging them forward. The weight of uncounted years pressed against them, each step a journey deeper into the realm of the lighthouse's secrets. The air shimmered with the residue of tales untold, and the pulse of the unseen grew stronger, a silent heartbeat echoing the rider's own as they approached the lantern room, the source of the lighthouse's ancient allure and its darkest mysteries. At the pinnacle of their ascent, the rider emerged into the lantern room, where they were greeted by a panorama that captured the essence of sublime terror and beauty intertwined. The vast expanse of the ocean under the watchful eye of the moon stretched into eternity, its surface a mirror reflecting a dance of shadows and light. This spectacle of nature's untamed power, with waves crashing against the cliffs in a relentless symphony, was a sight to stir the soul. Yet, amidst this awe-inspiring display, a singular presence commanded the rider's attention. By the window stood a figure gazing out at the tumultuous sea, a guardian of the threshold between worlds. This was the keeper of the lighthouse, or what remained of him, a spectral visage bound to this place of eternal watchfulness. 
His form, barely distinguishable from the air itself, shimmered with a light knot of this world, a testament to his entrapment in a perpetual state of liminality. The ghostly keeper, a custodian of the lighthouse's mysteries and the secrets of the deep, bore an expression of profound sorrow and resignation. It was clear that he was not merely a spirit haunting this place, but a soul forever linked to the lighthouse, caught in the ceaseless cycle of duty and solitude. The writer, standing in the presence of such a figure, felt a profound connection to the keeper's plight, a recognition of the weight of stories untold and destinies unfulfilled. In this moment, at the edge of the world, with the ocean's roar as a backdrop, the writer realized the true essence of the lighthouse's legacy. It was a beacon not just for ships lost at sea, but for souls adrift in the vastness of existence, seeking light amidst the shadows. The Keeper, a sentinel between the living and the spectral, watched over these wandering spirits, guiding them towards peace or penance, forever bound to his post by the chains of his own spectral existence. In that suspended moment, as the ghostly Keeper's gaze locked with the writers, a profound silence enveloped the room, punctuated only by the distant tumult of the sea. The air became a conduit for something extraordinary, a palpable energy that swirled around them, bridging realms. This connection, ephemeral yet intense, allowed for an exchange more intimate and revealing than any conversation. Through this silent communion, the Keeper's story unfolded within the writer's mind, a cascade of images and emotions that transcended the boundaries of time. The writer was flooded with the Keeper's remorse, a tangible sorrow for a life that had spiraled into tragedy, for choices that led him to this eternal vigil. This remorse was interwoven with a desperate yearning for redemption, for release from the chains that bound him to the lighthouse, a beacon not only for ships, but also for his own lost soul. Visions flickered through the writer's consciousness, of storms weathered, of ships guided to safety, and of those he couldn't save, each failure a weight upon his spectral shoulders. The Keeper's life, it seemed, was a tapestry of duty and despair, love for the sea intertwined with the isolation it imposed upon him. His existence, now caught in the liminal space between worlds, was a testament to the sacrifices made and the regrets that haunted him. This exchange, though wordless, was a sharing of essences between the living and the dead, a profound understanding that transcended the veils of existence. The writer, now a vessel for the Keeper's tale, felt an overwhelming empathy for the spirit before them. This moment of connection was not merely an encounter with the paranormal, but a poignant reminder of the enduring power of human emotion and the deep, often painful ties that bind us to our pasts. Overwhelmed by the torrent of the Keeper's memories, the writer found themselves adrift in the tempest of the Keeper's past. They experienced the ferocity of storms that raged like beasts against the lighthouse, felt the Keeper's resolve as he guided countless ships away from the treacherous embrace of the cliffs, and navigated the ceaseless solitude that was the price of his vigil. Each memory, vivid and intense, painted a portrait of a life dedicated to the safety of others, a beacon of hope amidst the merciless sea. But it was the memory of one fateful night that stood out with harrowing clarity, the night that the Keeper's world was shattered. The writer experienced the heart-stopping terror of a storm unlike any other, a maelstrom that threatened to consume everything in its path. They saw through the Keeper's eyes as he fought desperately to maintain the light, the only lifeline for a doomed vessel caught in the storm's fury. And then, the moment of despair as the sea, in its relentless hunger, claimed the lighthouse and the Keeper, swallowing them into its abyssal depths. This catastrophic event, the culmination of the Keeper's struggles and sacrifices, marked the beginning of his eternal entrapment. The lighthouse, once a symbol of hope and guidance, became his prison, tethering his spirit to the very place of his downfall. The writer, ensnared in the whirlwind of the Keeper's memories, felt the weight of his eternal remorse and the longing for redemption that now defined his existence. As the vision receded, leaving the writer standing once more in the lantern room with the specter, they were left with a profound understanding of the Keeper's plight. His life, marked by duty and sacrifice, continued to echo through the ages, a story of heroism and tragedy forever intertwined with the lighthouse 
that had been both his charge and his tomb. In the depth of their connection, the Keeper revealed to the writer a truth that lay hidden beneath the foundation of the lighthouse itself. This structure, perched at the edge of the world, was erected upon a ley line, a powerful conduit of spiritual energy that courses through the Earth like the lifeblood of the planet. This revelation cast the lighthouse in a new light. It was not merely a beacon for seafarers, but a pivotal bridge between realms, a guiding light for souls navigating the passage from this life to the next. The Keeper explained that the lighthouse's construction on this ley line was by no design of mere coincidence. It was intended to harness the ley line's potent energies, amplifying the beacon's reach not just across the physical expanse of the ocean, but through the spiritual veil that separates the living from the dead. In this capacity, the lighthouse served a dual purpose, safeguarding mortal vessels from the treachery of the sea and shepherding the spirits of the departed as they journeyed to the afterlife. However, the Keeper's tragic end, a demise that bound his spirit to the lighthouse, had unforeseen consequences on this delicate balance. His death, marked by turmoil and a breach of his duties, disrupted the flow of spiritual energy. The light that had been a beacon of safe passage for both ships and souls alike began to falter, casting both the physical and ethereal realms into chaos. As a result, the veil that delineates the living from the beyond thinned, becoming a fragile barrier through which lost souls slipped, ensnared in a limbo from which they could not escape. This disturbance was the source of the malevolent phenomena afflicting the villagers, a manifestation of the spirit's unrest and their thwarted journey to the afterlife. The Keeper's revelation laid bare the lighthouse's true significance and the critical role it played in the balance between life and death. The erratic flicker of its light was not just a signal of distress, but a cry for restoration, a plea to mend the broken link within the cycle of existence. The writer, entrusted with this profound knowledge, stood at the heart of a story that intertwined the fates of the living, the dead, and those caught between, with the potential to restore harmony or condemn the lighthouse and its inhabitants to perpetual torment. The Keeper's remorse permeated the very air, a heavy cloak of sorrow that draped over his spectral shoulders. His existence in the twilight of the lighthouse was not a matter of choice, but a sentence born of necessity. He was anchored to this realm by a singular, unyielding purpose, to heal the rift he had inadvertently caused, to reignite the beacon's steady flame and guide the lost souls ensnared in their liminal torment toward peace. However, his spectral state rendered him powerless to effect the change he so deeply desired. Bound to the shadows, his attempts to influence the material world were nothing more than whispers against the Tempest. It was within this revelation that the Keeper articulated the need for an intermediary, a living being who possessed the unique ability to walk the fine line between the seen and the unseen, the tangible and the intangible. This individual would serve as a conduit, bridging the gap that had widened between the realms, a restorer of the ley line's disrupted harmony. The Keeper's eyes, full of an age-old wisdom and a glimmer of hopeful light, beseeched the writer, silently conveying the enormity of the task at hand. For the writer, this request unveiled a path fraught with uncertainty, yet brimming with potential. To accept this charge was to venture beyond the boundaries of the known, to delve into the heart of the ley line's mystery and to confront the forces that lingered there. It was a call to transcend the ordinary, to become an agent of balance in a world where the boundaries between life and death, reality and myth had blurred into obscurity. The Keeper, in his spectral form, represented a link to the past, a guardian of secrets long forgotten. Yet in his plea lay a future not just for the ensnared spirits, but for Cliffhaven itself. The writer, armed with newfound knowledge and a resolve kindled by the Keeper's tale, stood at the precipice of an unseen world. Their role as the intermediary was not merely a task, but a destiny, a chance to mend the fractures within the fabric of existence, to illuminate the darkness with the beacon's revived light, and to shepherd lost souls towards the tranquility they sought, thus restoring the ancient balance that had once defined the lighthouse's true purpose. With the gravity of their newfound responsibility settling in, 
the rider committed to the cause, their resolve solidifying in the face of the monumental task ahead. The keeper, acknowledging their pledge with a gravitas born of centuries of isolation and longing, imparted the details of an ancient ceremony. This rite, lost to the annals of time yet preserved in the memory of the lighthouse's eternal guardian, was a complex tapestry of arcane knowledge, a ritual designed to cleanse the beacon of its impurities, magnify its guiding light, and carve out a corridor of light for the spirits caught in the twilight between worlds. The Keeper explained the ceremony with meticulous care, emphasizing the precise arrangement of symbols, the utterance of incantations that resonated with the primal energies of the Earth, and the use of elements that were in harmony with the sea. This ritual, he revealed, would not only restore the lighthouse's role as a beacon of safe passage, but also re-establish the ley line's flow, reinstating the balance disrupted by his untimely demise. Yet, this path was not without its dangers. The Keeper's solemn tone belied the severity of the threat that lurked just beyond the veil of visibility. Dark entities, drawn like moths to the flame of turmoil and discord, thrived in the shadows cast by the lighthouse's faltering light. These malevolent forces, emboldened by the ley line's disturbance, sought to ensnare more souls, feeding off the chaos and weaving their influence tighter around the stranded spirits. The Keeper warned that these entities would undoubtedly sense the initiation of the ritual and converge upon it, desperate to thwart their efforts and maintain their grip on the lost. The writer, armed with ancient knowledge and a daunting task, stood on the precipice of an unseen battle. The ritual, a beacon of hope in the enveloping darkness, promised redemption not just for the ensnared spirits, but for the Keeper and the Lighthouse itself. Yet. The path forward was shadowed by the imminent threat of these dark entities, setting the stage for a confrontation between the forces of light and the denizens of the shadow. With the fate of the lost and the sanctity of the ley line hanging in the balance, the rider braced for the challenges that lay ahead, determined to fulfill their pledge and restore harmony to the lighthouse and its guardians, both seen and unseen. Fortified by the Keeper's solemn disclosures, the writer prepared to embark on the ancient ceremony with a resolve that shone as fiercely as the beacon once did. Under the watchful eye of the moon, a silent sentinel in the night sky, they began to gather the necessary elements for the ritual, each component a thread in the fabric of the ancient rite that would weave together the realms of the living and the dead. The stakes of this endeavor loomed large, casting a shadow that extended far beyond the spectral inhabitants of the lighthouse. The writer, by stepping into the role of the intermediary, had become a pivotal figure in a saga that spanned the chasm between epics. Their own fate was now intricately linked with that of the ensnared spirits, the Keeper, and the very essence of the ley line itself. By initiating the rite, they were not merely challenging the darkness that had seeped into the lighthouse's foundations, but were also confronting the existential void that threatened to unravel the tapestry of existence itself. With each preparatory step, the writer felt the weight of their undertaking. The ritual represented a beacon of hope, a chance to mend what had been fractured, yet it also posed a grave risk. The dark entities drawn to the chaos and the potential upheaval of their dominion would not idly stand by as their influence was challenged. The writer was acutely aware that in the balance hung not only the restoration of harmony, but also the peril of deepening the chaos should they falter. As they positioned the symbols and recited the incantations, the air around the lighthouse began to thrum with energy, a palpable tension that hinted at the power coursing through the ley line beneath. The sea's roar seemed to echo the gravity of the moment, a chorus of anticipation for the coming confrontation between light and darkness. Standing at the threshold of the unknown, the rider took a deep breath, their gaze fixed on the horizon where the sea met the sky, a boundary that mirrored the one they were about to traverse. With the Keeper's ghostly visage as their silent guide and the moon's glow as their beacon, they began the ritual, stepping into the void with the determination to restore the lighthouse's legacy as a bridge between worlds, a guardian for those lost at sea and in spirit. With the moon at its zenith, casting a silvery sheen over the scene, 
The writer initiated the arcane ritual amidst an atmosphere charged with anticipation and the raw energy of unseen forces. The air around them thickened, vibrating with the intensity of a world on the cusp of transformation. It was as though the very threads of reality, stretched to their limits by the lighthouse's plight and the ley line's disruption, began to unravel, only to be meticulously rethreaded by the writer's careful incantations and the ritual's ancient power. As the boundary that separated the material plane from the ethereal realm grew increasingly fragile, the air was saturated with the essence of the countless souls caught in the limbo of the lighthouse's shadow. These spirits, ensnared in a purgatory forged from their unfulfilled desires and unquenched sorrows, manifested around the perimeter of the ritual, their faces etched with the pain of their eternal wandering. The writer, standing at the heart of this convergence, could feel the gaze of these lost souls, their longing for release a tangible pressure against the shield of their resolve. With each uttered incantation and each symbol drawn in the air, the ritual's potency magnified, weaving a tapestry of light that began to pierce the surrounding darkness. The fabric of the veil, strained to its breaking point, shimmered with the potential for liberation or further descent into chaos. The spectral figures that crowded the edge of visibility seemed to lean forward, their yearning palpable, as if the rider's actions held the key to their salvation or their doom. In this moment, suspended between night and the cusp of dawn, the rider was more than a mere mortal. They were the fulcrum upon which the fates of many hinged. The ritual, a beacon of hope in the enveloping gloom, promised a pathway to peace for the souls that had lost their way. Yet the encroaching darkness, eager to claim the ritual's energy for its own, loomed as a reminder of the stakes at play. With the celestial orb as their witness, the rider pressed on, their every movement a defiance against the forces that sought to maintain the veil's tear, determined to mend the rift and guide the ensnared spirits toward the serenity that had long eluded them. In the hallowed confines of the Lantern Room, with the writer's voice carrying the weight of ages, the ritual reached a crescendo. Each chant, imbued with the Keeper's ancient wisdom, vibrated through the air, pulsing with a power that seemed to awaken the very soul of the lighthouse. This arcane energy, a resonant force born from the depths of the Earth and the heights of the celestial sphere, Echo down the lighthouse's time-worn corridors, seeping into the stone and wood, infusing the air with a palpable sense of anticipation and renewal. As the incantations flowed, the beacon atop the lighthouse began to resonate in harmony with the ritual's rhythm, its light flickering, then pulsating with renewed vigor. This pulsation, at first gentle and tentative, grew steadily stronger, a visual symphony of light that beat in tandem with the heart of the ley line below. The beacon's radiance, long dimmed by the shadows that had crept into its core, now surged with a brilliance that spoke of ancient promises and the hope of rebirth. This luminance, a beacon of hope, cut through the darkness with an intensity that had not been seen in generations. It pierced the veil of the night, reaching out to the sea and sky and calling to the lost souls that lingered in the shadow of the lighthouse. The light, now a living entity in its own right, danced and twirled, casting patterns of redemption and release across the troubled waters and the ethereal plain where the spirits watched, their forms bathed in the glow of potential salvation. The ritual, powered by the convergence of ley line energies and the sheer will of the writer, began to mend the rift that had marred the fabric of the realms. The Lantern Room, a crucible of transformation, radiated with the force of the ceremony, its walls and windows aglow with a light that seemed to push back the boundaries of the night itself. In this moment, the lighthouse reclaimed its role as a guardian, not just of the physical coast, but of the spiritual passage between worlds, its beacon a guiding star for those navigating the tumultuous seas of existence and beyond. As the ritual neared its zenith, the forces of darkness, ever vigilant, began to converge upon the lighthouse. These malevolent specters, manifestations of the void that had been drawn to the lighthouse's embattled energies, 
emerged from the shadows like phantoms rising from the depths of a troubled dream. Their forms, fluid and amorphous, twisted into shapes that defied the laws of nature, each a testament to the corruption that had taken root in their essence through centuries of wandering the margins of existence. Fueled by a deep-seated malevolence and a desire to perpetuate the cycle of entrapment and despair, these entities sought to disrupt the delicate fabric of the ritual. They were driven not just by an instinctual craving for chaos, but by a profound resentment of the light that promised release and redemption to the souls they sought to claim. As the beacon's glow intensified, so too did the specter's determination to extinguish it, to drown the lighthouse and its surroundings in a darkness so profound that no hope of dawn could pierce it. Their assault was a tempest of shadow, a swirling vortex of malice that clashed with the expanding perimeter of the ritual's light. The air became a battlefield, the energies of creation and destruction locked in a dance as ancient as time itself. The rider, standing firm within the eye of this storm, chanted with renewed fervor, their voice a beacon in itself, warding off the encroaching darkness with every syllable imbued with the ancient power bestowed upon them by the Keeper. This confrontation, a pivotal moment in the age-old struggle between light and darkness, was more than a mere battle of wills. It was a testament to the enduring strength of hope against despair, of the relentless pursuit of liberation over bondage. The writer, though mortal, embodied the indomitable spirit of all those who had stood against the night, their resolve unyielding in the face of the abyss that sought to claim them. With each passing moment, the ritual neared completion, the beacon's light striving to break free of the shadows that sought to smother it, a symbol of the eternal quest for harmony amidst the chaos of existence. In the midst of the ritual's climax, a chilling gale as if conjured from the deepest reaches of the abyss swept through the lantern room. This ghostly wind, cold enough to seep into the bone, sought to extinguish the ring of candles that encircled the rider. These flames, small yet steadfast, served as a bastion of light amidst the encroaching gloom, their flickering glow a testament to the fragile barrier standing between the lighthouse and the engulfing darkness. Amidst the howling of the wind, whispering voices emerged, each thread laden with despair and malevolence. These were the voices of the spectral assailants, their words weaving a tapestry of doubt and terror designed to unravel the writer's concentration. They spoke of futility, of the inevitable triumph of darkness over light, seeking to sow the seeds of despair in the heart of the one who dared defy them. This cacophony aimed not just to disrupt the ritual, but to pierce the very soul of the writer, to erode their resolve and leave the beacon, and through it, countless lost souls shrouded in an unending night. Yet within this maelstrom of spectral aggression, the writer's spirit proved resilient. Anchored by the gravity of their purpose and shielded by the depth of their conviction, they found within themselves a core of steel. With each whispered threat that sought to sway them, their resolve only solidified, their chants rising above the din of malevolent voices. The ring of candles, though assailed by the unearthly tempest, burned brighter with the rider's determination, each flame a defiance against the shadows that sought to claim dominion. This battle, waged in the confines of the Lantern Room, became a symbol of the eternal struggle between hope and despair, light and darkness. The rider, a lone figure amidst the chaos, embodied the indomitable will of humanity, a beacon of perseverance shining steadfast against the night. In this pivotal moment, as the forces of darkness sought to overwhelm, the very essence of the ritual and the rider's unwavering focus became a beacon unto itself, illuminating the path toward salvation, not just for the ensnared spirits, but for all who found themselves lost in the shadows. Confronted by the enveloping tide of darkness, the rider stood as a pillar of determination and courage within the Lantern Room. Their will, tempered by the urgent necessity to weave together the unraveling strands of reality, was bolstered by the ethereal glow of the moon, which poured through the windows, bathing the room in a silver sheen that seemed to shield and guide them. This celestial light served not only as a beacon in the physical sense, but also as a spiritual guide, imbuing the rider with a sense of purpose that was as unwavering as it was luminous. 
With each word of the ancient incantations, the writer's voice cut through the darkness, a clear and resonant sound that reverberated against the walls of the lighthouse and within the hearts of the spectral entities gathered in witness. This voice, firm and unyielding, became more than a medium of the ritual. It was a declaration of defiance against the forces that sought to maintain the division between worlds, a testament to the writer's resolve to heal the breach and restore balance. The spectral assembly, their forms momentarily stabilized by the strengthening light, watched with expressions that were a complex tapestry of emotions. In the flicker of the ritual's growing power, their faces reflected a duality of hope and despair. Hope for the promise of release and transition that the ritual represented, and despair for the countless years lost to shadow and torment. Yet, as the writer continued, the scale began to tip increasingly towards hope, their eyes lighting up with the possibility of salvation, a reflection of the burgeoning radiance that fought to pierce the darkness. This moment, poised on the knife edge between success and catastrophe, underscored the profound connection between the living and the dead, the tangible and the ethereal. The writer, by virtue of their unbreakable focus and the power of their voice, became a bridge over which the lost might finally find their way, a beacon of light guiding them towards the peace that had eluded them for so long. In the midst of chaos, the ritual continued, each invocation a step closer to mending the fractured tapestry of the cosmos, guided by the moon's unwavering light and the writer's steadfast heart. As the final words of the ritual were spoken, a transformation of epic proportions unfolded within the heart of the lighthouse. The beacon, dormant for too long, erupted in a brilliant explosion of light, a pillar of radiance that split the encroaching darkness asunder. This light, pure and untainted, surged with the power of the ancient rites and the unbreakable will of the rider, casting a luminous shield that repelled the dark forces with its overwhelming intensity. The malevolent entities, their forms unable to withstand the sanctity of the beacon's light, were scattered to the winds, their shadows dissolving into the ether, their plans to dominate and destroy, foiled by the very force they sought to extinguish. The air itself seemed to sing with the energy of release, vibrating with the collective size of the liberated souls. The space around the rider, once thick with the tension of battle, now resonated with the soft murmurs of gratitude and relief. These whispers, gentle yet profound, were the voices of the souls that had been trapped in a liminal torment, now freed from their bonds of despair. Their ethereal forms, once marked by the scars of their ordeals, began to shimmer with a transcendent light, each spirit embarking on the journey they had been denied for so long. One by one they ascended, their procession a spectacle of peace and redemption, a serene ballet of light that spiraled upwards towards the beacon. This beacon, now a true lighthouse of the soul, guided them towards their final rest, their forms gradually blending into the celestial glow that had heralded their release. The chains that had bound them to the earth, to their unending sorrow, shattered under the weight of their collective liberation, allowing them to move beyond the veil in a harmonious procession of light. The rider, standing witness to this miraculous exodus, felt the enormity of what had been achieved. The ritual, conceived in hope and executed in defiance of the darkness, had mended the fractured boundary between worlds, restoring the lighthouse's purpose as a beacon not only for lost ships, but for lost souls. In the aftermath of this victory, the lighthouse stood as a monument to resilience, a testament to the light that endures, guiding the wayward home across both stormy seas and spiritual gulfs. The night, once a canvas of despair, now shone with the light of countless stars, each one a soul whose journey had found its end, thanks to the courage of one who dared to stand against the darkness. In the aftermath of the ritual, the lighthouse stood transformed, its beacon a radiant symbol of hope and guidance. This light, forged through the rider's courage and the ancient power of the ritual, pierced the night with an intensity that had never before been seen. Its beam, a sword of clarity, cut through the enveloping darkness, heralding a new era for the lighthouse as a true guardian of the seas. 
Mariners adrift in the tumultuous waters would now find their way by this beacon, a steadfast hand guiding them safely through the perilous night. The writer, though physically drained from the ordeal, was imbued with a sense of profound accomplishment and serenity. As they stood amidst the glow of the restored lighthouse, the spectral keeper appeared before them for one last time. His visage, previously marred by the weight of unending duty and regret, now shone with a peaceful light. The burdens of centuries had been lifted from his shoulders, replaced by the tranquility of release. His eyes, once a mirror to the depths of his sorrow, now reflected the calm of a soul freed from its earthly bindings. In a moment of silent communion, the Keeper conveyed his deep gratitude to the writer, a gesture that spoke volumes of the gratitude and respect he held for the one who had ended his eternal vigil. With a final nod, a silent acknowledgement of the bond they had shared and the journey they had undertaken together, the Keeper began to fade from view, his form dissolving into the radiant light that now filled the room. His departure was not one of sadness, but of liberation, a soul finally allowed to embark on the journey he had long been denied. As the Keeper's presence vanished, the rider was left in the quiet of the Lantern Room, surrounded by the light of a beacon reborn. The night outside, once a canvas of endless shadows, now thrummed with the promise of dawn, the darkness retreating before the lighthouse's might. The sea, witness to the night's events, whispered against the shore, a sound of reverence for the miracle that had unfolded. The lighthouse, once a lonely sentinel on the edge of despair, now stood as a beacon of hope, its light a testament to the enduring power of courage and the unbreakable bond between the living and the spirits that watch over them. The writer, their role as the intermediary fulfilled, looked out into the night, their heart light with the knowledge that they had rekindled not just the beacon's flame, but the light within countless souls, guiding them all to safe harbor at last. With the arrival of dawn, its light spilling over the edge of the world, the rider emerged from the embrace of the ancient lighthouse, fundamentally transformed by the night's profound events. The ordeal had demanded they gaze into the darkest recesses of existence to confront the raw essence of despair and chaos. Yet, standing on the precipice of the abyss, they did not falter. Instead, they became a conduit of light a bearer of balance and peace for the countless souls ensnared in their spectral purgatory. The air, crisp with the promise of a new beginning, carried the scent of the sea and the earth awakening to the touch of the sun's first rays. The horizon, once a boundary between the known and the unknowable, now shimmered with the potential of untold stories and new journeys. The rider, their silhouette outlined against the burgeoning light, carried with them the weight of their experiences, a treasure trove of wisdom and empathy forged in the crucible of the night's trial. Their role as the intermediary, the bridge between the light and the shadow, had imbued them with a profound understanding of the delicate fabric that weaves together the tapestry of existence. They had learned that within the heart of darkness, there lies the potential for immense light, and that even in the deepest despair, there is hope for redemption and renewal. As they descended the cliffside path away from the lighthouse, the rider carried forward not just the memory of the spectral keeper and the souls they had liberated, but also the knowledge that they had played a pivotal role in the eternal dance of light and darkness. The lighthouse, standing tall against the backdrop of the breaking day, was a beacon not just for ships lost at sea, but also a symbol of the indomitable human spirit, capable of confronting the abyss and emerging not only unscathed, but empowered. The world with all its mysteries and wonders lay open before the writer, a canvas awaiting the stroke of their pen. Their journey had taught them that within each of us lies the power to effect monumental change, to illuminate the darkest corners and guide the lost home. With a heart full of new tales and a soul alight with purpose, the writer stepped into the day, ready to explore the infinite horizons that awaited forever changed, forever vigilant, and forever inspired by the night, they turned back the tide of eternal darkness. The events of that transformative night wove themselves into the fabric of Cliffhaven's history, becoming a tale of legendary proportions. 
It was a story of an outsider who, armed with nothing but resolve and the faint glow of hope, ventured into the depths of the unknown and emerged as a beacon of salvation. This tale, passed down through generations, would serve as a reminder of the night the darkness was held at bay, not by a native son or daughter, but by a wanderer whose courage knew no bounds. The writer, though they would continue their journey, leaving the rugged cliffs and the tumultuous seas of Cliffhaven behind, left an indelible mark on the village and its people. The lighthouse, which had stood for centuries as a silent guardian, its story intertwined with the ebb and flow of the tides, now also stood as a testament to the writer's bravery. Under the watchful gaze of the moon, which had witnessed countless cycles of hope and despair, the lighthouse shone brighter than ever before, its light a steadfast symbol of the fragile yet resilient barrier between worlds. This boundary, forever altered by the events of that night, remained a testament to the eternal dance between the seen and the unseen, the known and the unknown. The lighthouse, once a mere guide for maritime voyagers, had been transformed into a beacon for all who found themselves lost, not just on the turbulent seas, but in the tumultuous journey of existence. It reminded those who heard its tale that there are always lights in the darkness, beacons of hope and havens of refuge, and that sometimes the courage of one can illuminate the path for many. The legacy of the writer and the night they stood against the shadows would forever burn bright in the collective memory of Cliffhaven. It was a story of triumph, of the power of the human spirit to face the abyss and not only survive, but thrive. The lighthouse, standing tall against the backdrop of the changing skies, remained a beacon of hope, a symbol of the courage to confront the darkness and the enduring light that can emerge from the heart of the night. Now it's your turn to delve into the unknown. Have you ever experienced something unexplainable, something that made your skin crawl and your heart race? Share your stories in the comments below. And if you dare, suggest where our next journey into the heart of fear should take us. Is there a haunted forest, an abandoned asylum, or perhaps a ghost town that calls to you from the shadows? Let us weave the next tale together, drawing from the well of your experiences and fears. And who knows, perhaps your story will be the next to chill the spine and haunt the dreams of those who dare to listen. Until then, keep the light on and the spirits at bay. For in the world of the paranormal, the end is only the beginning of another spine-tingling adventure.